All right, in this video, I'm going to be going over the fundamental theorem of calculus. We're going to take a look at the actual theorem. We're going to then take a look at some notation, and then we're just going to do a couple examples of how you're going to apply this fundamental theorem of calculus in order to help you evaluate your definite integrals. All right, I am going to assume that you've already been doing integration, you know how to integrate, and you've worked probably with a lot of indefinite integrals up to this point. Okay, so taking a look at the theorem here. Basically, it says if a function f is continuous on that closed interval from a to b, then capital F is the antiderivative of f on the integral from a to b. So then we can say that the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to capital F of b minus capital F of a. All right, with f of x being our original function, or I mean being the function that we are going to integrate, and then capital F being the antiderivative or that inner, um, antiderivative, that original function before we took the derivative. Okay, so some commonly used notation here. When we go to work this um, definite integral out, we would have our definite integral, f of x dx, all right, f representing the antiderivative here, and then after you've calculated that antiderivative, Usually there's notation, square box notation at the end, and your limits of integration are here, and then you do the plugging in to do the subtraction and the arithmetic to find that actual definite integral. All right, so we're going to work on a couple of examples. All right, straightforward, easy examples, just kind of to get the theorem down pat. This would be a very early on um, examples of these definite integrals. <clears throat> Okay, so let's say we're integrating from 1 to 2, and we've got x squared minus 3 dx. All right, so the very first thing is we have to find that antiderivative. In other words, we've got to integrate this function. All right, I am assuming that you've done integration on those indefinite integrals. All right, add 3, and that's going to be a 1 over 3 there. So when I integrate x squared, I'm going to get a 1 over 3, x to the third. Integrate that constant. I've really got an x to the 0 there. Add 1, so it would be just an x there. So minus 3x. All right, so I've done the antiderivative at that point. Now I can use that box square notation and put my limits of integration here. All right, that's showing now that I'm ready to do the f of b minus f of a. All right, I can plug 2 in and then subtract and plug 1 in. All right, now under normal circumstances, I would keep the equal sign equal underneath each other and work it all out here. All right, but if I do that, I'm clearly going to run into the paper over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my equal sign all the way over here, which is something I don't normally do. All right, now let's plug in 2 into both of those locations. Okay, so I'm going to have a 1 third times a 2 to the third minus a 3 times a 2. All right, so there's my f of b. Now I'm going to subtract f of a, so I'm going to plug in my 1 so then I'm going to have a 1 third times a 1 raised to the third power minus 3 times 1. All right. In all honesty, when you're working out a, a definite integral like this, when I calculated that antiderivative right here, when I did the actual integration, that right there really is the only calculus in this problem. And then from here on out, after you apply that f of b minus f of a, which is that fundamental theorem of calculus, it is arithmetic from here on down. Okay, so, and, but tedious arithmetic sometimes, and you definitely want, don't want to make a mistake here. All right, if I do this, let's see, that'd be an eight-thirds right there. I'm going to go through this arithmetic very, very quickly. This is going to be a six. All right, minus, this is just going to be a one-third, and then minus a three. All right, at this point, you either do this by hand, you grab a calculator, all right, or whatever. From this first expression, I'm going to get a negative ten-thirds, minus, and from here I'll get a negative 8 thirds. Going ahead and subtracting there for my final definite integral, I'm going to get a negative 2 thirds. All right, and if you need to work through that arithmetic, you're going to be expected to do it by hand versus with a calculator. You might want to pause the video and work out that arithmetic just to make sure that you can get it. Okay, now on this second uh, definite integral, I'm going to take a look at it, do some things before I actually try to integrate. This has got that... Um, three coefficient out there. So which is just going to make your integration harder if you leave it inside the integration symbol. So you could pull the three out and then the square root of x, that's going to be kind of hard to integrate written as it is now. So you might want to rewrite that as an x to the one half. Some of those techniques that you used for those indefinite integrals are still going to apply here. Okay, so I'm going to pull the three out in front. 
I'm going to be then integrating from 1 to 4 of an x, and I'm going to rewrite x to the 1 half dx. All right, that just makes that expression a whole lot easier to integrate. And then here again, I probably would have uh, continued to went down, but I don't want to run out of room, so I'm going to bring that equal sign all the way over here. I'm going to have my 3 on the outside. All right, now let's go ahead and integrate that. I've got a 1 half. If I add 1, I'd be adding 2 over 2, which will give me an exponent of 3 halves. So exponent of 3 halves, and then 1 over 3 halves is going to give me that 2 thirds coefficient in front. Okay, so again, pretty simple integration after you rewrite the problem. Now I need to put on those limits of integration from 1 to 4. I'm going to be plugging in 4 and then subtracting, plugging in 1. So that's the f of b minus f of a. So now I'm still implementing that fundamental theorem of calculus. So 3 and then 2 thirds. Now let's rewrite this as the square root and then being cubed, it's going to keep our numbers way smaller here. So when I plug in that 4, I'm going to be doing the square root of 4 and then cubed minus. Um, now I'm going to plug in my 1, so I'm going to have a 2 thirds. And again, I'm going to go square root of 1 and then cube it. Much smaller numbers there. Okay, now let's go ahead and um, distribute that 3. If I distribute 3 at this point, then the fractions are going to cancel out. Okay, so that's going to make it a whole lot easier on the arithmetic as well. All right, square root of 4 is 2 cubed, and then times another 2 is going to give me a 16. All right, square root of 1 cubed times 2 is going to give me a 2, so that's going to make this definite integral a 14. And there again, like I said, if you, I did this one a little bit slower than I did this one, it, you need to work on that arithmetic, you need to do it without a calculator, go ahead and hit pause on the video, make sure that you can get those two things. But this would be um, a video, hopefully, that was useful to someone that was just beginning to work with those definite integrals and understanding the true meaning of what that fundamental theorem of calculus is and how it allows us to then evaluate these definite integrals. Definitely, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.